Hey guys, I'm Jacqueline. I'm Marcella. And today we're talking about the season two mid-season finale of Shadow of Days. Ah! Oh my god, we have so much to talk about. <gasps> so right in the beginning, we know that last episode, Valentine took Simon. So in the whole beginning, it's really funny that like, Valentine is FaceTime. <laughs> yeah, it literally like I think it said FaceTime. It didn't did. It? it was literally set up like FaceTime. It was really brutal the way that he captured him because he freaking slit his throat. Oh my gosh, that was so disgusting. And the way he was like bleeding out. We were terrified at that moment because we're like we didn't. It looked like he literally. I thought him. he like decapitated and him or something. And then it went something. to a freaking commercial. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That. Can we talk about how the commercials were so strategically placed and annoyingly placed? Like I feel like ever after something huge would happen and we'd be like, oh my god, and it would go away. It would be a commercial. <gasps> what? That can't be right. You can't just slit Simon's throat and then go to a commercial. Yeah, I know. That was really <laughs> During that scene before that, I think it was before the FaceTime scene, we got that really cute Clace hug, which was really nice. Okay. When everything goes to hell, the one person you could always rely on to have a solution somehow or somehow help out Magnus. Always. I love it. Always. So, I love it because that's always like that in the books too. Oh my god, what'd you think of when Magnus, he saw the vision and he saw what they saw from Ethereal. That was really cool. And, and he mentioned like, the Morgensterns and how it's like oh, the morning star. I loved, I star. loved when he mentioned the Morgensterns. Uh, that oh was... Man, that was like, we freaked out. <laughs> morning star. How art thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. I thought it was weird though. How um, when he goes and he sees the vision. Yeah, we always, his, always said that when the eyes roll his back. His eyes I don't roll like that. back. His it's eyes, so weird. His eyes roll white. I don't like. It's so it's like weird. Strange. Another thing that bothered me this episode is every single fight scene. We had this annoying. Yeah, techno. that's been bothering us. If you've been watching our reactions every week, that's been bothering us since the beginning of the season. They've every episode, Cheesy. literally every episode, they have this blaring techno when they go to fight scenes, and it's like. Some of it is okay, but most of it you don't need it. Like it's just yeah, it doesn't doesn't fit. It just yeah, it almost ruins the scenes because you, it does. you're trying to like focus it on the amazing you out fight of it. scene, and yeah, it takes you out of it, and you are just feeling like you're in the club. <laughs> also, one thing that we thought was bizarre in this episode that made no sense whatsoever to us was the whole power. <laughs> what? Thing. What? Since okay, when? Like, like we know apparently that Valentine needed lightning to. It do wasn't even thing, storming out. Do the, I don't know. <laughs> do the thing with the sword. Do the thing with the sword. He needed lightning. But I don't understand the whole power cord to the Institute. Like, there's this, like, power cord connecting the Institute. Or, like, I don't I don't know. Then we had that scene with Alder Tree and Alec when they're, like, programming themselves in. Like, what are they doing? I don't know. It was just... So oh, I weird. loved, um, throughout the whole episode, I loved how sassy Alec was towards Alder Tree, because we're all done with Alder Tree. Like, we all are fed up with him, and he needs to leave immediately. I wish he had died. But I'm annoyed that he didn't die. Oh. Do we still think he's Sebastian? Because at the very end, we see Sebastian. Don't tell me that was not Sebastian. That was definitely Sebastian with the sword at the very end. Also, throughout this whole episode, we had the Downworlders trying to stop them from, like, activating the sword and all that. And Raphael freaking looks like he's gonna bite Clary at one point. And then and it goes go commercial. <laughs> do the thing when they go to the commercial. <gasps> what the fuck? It really made it look like he's dead. Uh, that he... I was a little nervous there. I'm like, what? I mean, what? you knew he wasn't going to no. because that would have totally fucked up everything. Yeah, no, but, but but at the same time, Raphael is really high and addicted to Shadowhunter blood. Exactly. So, so you, you don't know. know. You never know really what the writers of the show are gonna do. Clearly. That whole scene where they freaking tricked us, thinking that it was Clary. Who we were was really annoyed at first. And, a daylighter, and it ended up being Jace using the trusty handy dandy shape shifting rune you gotta oh. throw that in there because it's not a finale without the shape shifting rune but oh my god guys at that moment when it was really jay's was so exciting for us like we were thank god we got really scared yeah.
That's how he's gonna become a fucking day later. By Clary. Obviously, I they, like it the way they did the books better. Yes. <laughs> but it's all right because at least they kept it G, so it's fine. Yeah, exactly. They could have they could have kept it Clary very easily. Yeah. It made more sense, though, for them to throw Jace in there. Because with the whole plan, like, you knew that they had a plan that whole time. It's very different. This whole, this episode as a whole was very different from City of Ashes, the ending. And I know that they did that purposely because it's a TV show and it's not the book. And I totally understand that. But at the same time, I was missing that classic boat scene at the very end. Yeah, and honestly, we had talked about that this whole season together. Like, yeah, we just had been waiting I've for been that moment with Clara in the boat. And I don't know. It, yeah, and the whole thing even with Simon at the very end of the book. Like, if you haven't read the book, what, what happens is how they find out that Simon is a daylighter is you think that Simon's gonna die and Clary thinks that Simon is gonna die and she's holding him on that boat and you don't even know at first before they get to that place you don't even know if they're alive because the boat explodes and so you have that fear of oh my god is Simon what's gonna happen and then you find out that he's a daylighter and they did it very very differently in the show and I'm okay with the way they did it but oh I wish they got that book moment. It was more of a, it was more of like a shock in the book yeah Simon being a day later here it was just kind of like oh okay Simon's standing there all oh, the light hits him oh it's not hurting him like in the book yeah. it was more like oh, oh my god. god like he's not dying it looked like know. that moment in Twilight when Edward yeah, standing Jasmine, there. Was, Jasmine literally looked at me she goes I was waiting for him to sparkle <laughs> no it reminded me of that moment in Twilight when Edward's standing there and then and the sun and the like, sun comes through the beams window. on him and then he turns to Bella and he's sparkling it reminded oh, me oh outside of that. in the meadow yeah it reminded yeah. me of that <gasps> yes! yes day later <laughs> about time Not turning to dust. Ah. Yay! Aww. But I'm happy that he's a daylighter because obviously this opens a lot more doors for Simon. Because Simon can go around in the daylight now, guys. This is huge. And this is a big deal because this is very dangerous because nobody could find out about this. Because if they do, yeah. it's going to be bad. So what does Simon do immediately? The vampires are going to want to try to eat Clary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what happens immediately? Simon runs outside with Clary, just everybody can see. Aww. 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 Oh, I love seeing Magnus and Clary working together. I always, we always love their, oh my gosh, I love <laughs> their scenes. Their, their scenes are so great together. I love that, um, that moment when, uh, when they first go into the institute. Yeah, they first and, portal it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I like that scene. Oh, too. I love how um, Magnus didn't want to let Clary go and he was so scared, but he knew that Clary was going to go anyway because yeah. Simon was in there and he just, oh, I love their friendship. It's so good. And then the scene with, I love the scene with Magnus and the warlock child. Oh my oh god. Oh my gosh. Magnus getting through to the warlock child. That was so many feels. So many feels. <laughs> She felt alone, I think. Like, she felt probably scared of her own powers. And Magnus reaching out to her was a really... And I think Magnus was scene. Magnus was able to re to reach her on that level because he's like her. That's what he said and, to her. He says mm -hmm. that to her. And he was the only one. To, that was That's why she wouldn't listen to Clary. She wouldn't listen to Jay. She wouldn't listen to Alex. She wouldn't listen to any of them because she couldn't relate to them. And Magnus was able to reach her. And I, she, she, yeah, so but beautiful. she had a soft spot for Alec in that beginning. Well, she yeah, could have killed she didn't, him. She didn't kill Alec because that was like kind of like Alec, Alec was nice to her, to her and yeah. stuff. Um, all the fight scenes this episode I thought were so awesome. Like I loved. Um, see, I always love seeing Clary fighting. I thought that's 
always so cool and i love seeing simon and jace fighting together mm -hmm. simon i love simon and jace in this episode because i love how J how jace has come to care about simon yeah yeah, like not, yeah. Even, not even because simon's clary's like best friend slash boyfriend but like I don't know, like, I think he really does, like... He does! Like, they became, like, friends, and, like, I yeah. appreciate that. And then we also get Alec, of course, fighting like crazy. I wish that we got more of Alec and Jace fighting, though. Like, that power batai feel of when they mm -hmm. fight together. You know what I feel like we were lacking in this episode? Is a She was only made that brief it's appearance really, of fighting. She, yeah, she had that moment, because and... Because she's really not in good shape yeah. because of everything that's been going on with her which is annoying because like izzy's a good fighter and i would have liked to see more like yeah. her in with everybody and like really helping she had that but... she did come through for alec and alder tree at that moment but that was it then she kind of that was that was that took a lot out of her yeah. i hope that she gets better and i think she will i think her letting I think she's kind of on the road to getting better yeah you know? i think her letting go of Raphael is also kind of her way of mm -hmm. eventually making herself better and i watch guys <laughs> jace saying the line from the book to simon yes oh my oh, god oh my god i would have killed you i would have let you i would have let you <gasps> he said the book line <gasps> That was probably my favorite line this whole episode. Oh my right? god. Um, yeah. Oh my god. Well, originally, you repeated I repeated it before he said it. Because I knew that I knew that, that line was supposed to happen. And as soon as Simon says the beginning, when he's like, I would have killed you. And then I'm like, I would have let you. Like, say it, Jace. Say it. It's so Jace. Because at that moment, Jace feels dispensable almost. He feels... Mm -hmm. He hates himself. He doesn't really... Like... He's very, at that, he's very point, at that point, character. he still thought Clary was a sister, He still too. thought, yeah. So he's going through all those emotions mm -hmm. of dealing with Valentine as his father. All of these things, they add up. And um, that angst, you really feel the angst. The other amazing fight scene was with Valentine and Jace. Oh my god, that was so cool. Yeah, the whole ending. Oh my god, it was so awesome. The intensity of it. And so yeah, while this was very, very different from the books, I feel like it did still have that Shadow Hunter feel to it. Especially with Valentine and Jace, and then Jace and like that moment with the three of them with Clary was there. Like I mm -hmm. did feel it did feel very like Mortal Instruments Shadow Hunters. Yeah, it did. Yeah, the whole thing with the sword and then Valentine tells Jace, that Clary, finally, not his sister. Finally, finally, finally. I thought you were not my son. Oh! I'm not your father, Jocelyn. Yes! Oh, yes! Clary is not your sister. Finally! Thank God. Wish I was telling Marcella this earlier. I'm like, I wish that they. It's so uh, annoying that. The way that they found out. Like, Jace. Oh! Are you me? Oh. Clary doesn't know, and Jace is not gonna tell her because of Simon. It it throws some more angst to their relationship, but it drags it out. I hope, like, early on, like, I hope that this doesn't go on where Clary doesn't know, like, all next season because that would be really annoying. It's unrealistic. Look at the scene. At the Sealy Court? Yes. Maybe we'll get the scene at the Sealy Court, and then that's when Clary will realize, and then he'll, like, confirm it, maybe? I hope. I don't know. Oh, maybe. That would be really good if they did it that way. Right? Yeah, that would be really good. That would be a good way to do it. I I'm missing that scene that we get in City of Glass when Clary and Jay's are... Clary looks at him, and she goes you're not my brother and he just looks at her and goes i know we still, we still could we still could we always say that we feel the angst on jace's end like dom does a fantastic job of capturing that yeah he, but, he's gotten a lot better at that. yeah like mm -hmm. it's grown a lot but i'm i need it from cat like i need cat to we got her looking at jace in those moments we got them very little it was there well, because, this episode, yeah, but very little i need, to, I need, I need a more, little Clary. bit more like there though this episode like i did feel it a little bit especially at that moment when Jace grabs the sword and they don't know what's gonna happen and Simon kind of holds Clary back. At least we got Happy Malik. <gasps> oh my gosh, guys. Oh my god, Malik. that episode was, that part was Malik, so good. Malik, I love you.
worth the and wait. And Alec was so worried that Magnus was killed when, like, all the downworlders went yes. down. But, oh my gosh. That, that was I really love you. sweet. It was just a really big moment That was a huge moment Malik. for Alec. So, I'm really... They did it really well. Yeah, and the hug after the... Like, the hug where they held each other was yeah. so good. Everything about that... I love that Malik in this so Everything much. about that was so good. Malik is literally OTP on this show. It, oh my god, literally the biggest OTP on this entire show. Mm -hmm. And now, the very end, we need to talk about what that sort of thing is. Yeah, you guys have to let us what know below who you think it is. I yeah. obviously I I think it's just Sebastian. Obviously it's I it, it's Sebastian, obviously. But is Sebastian still Alder Tree? We still don't know if Alder Tree could have used the shape shifting rune and was Sebastian. I feel like that's not really likely. And we kinda got a little bit of no, Alder Tree's backstory this episode too. About how he was in love with the downworlder and how it didn't work out and all of that thing. Exactly. So that wouldn't make sense if it was Sebastian, because Sebastian was exactly. in love with the downworlder. Exactly. So. so I feel like that kind of negated that whole theory. How would Sebastian have known that the sword was there at all? Because it got sent to him probably through Clary in that rune. Clary probably didn't know what that rune was. How would Sebastian have sent Clary a rune? Randomly. <laughs> what are the technicalities there? Like, I'm really excited for Sebastian in next season and for us to finally get some answers to where he's been this entire season, really. You know he's going to try and get Valentine out. Like That's going to be the big thing. They're gonna He's going to try and break him out. That's something that we actually didn't get much in the book. No. So I really want to see, like, I would love flashbacks of that. I feel like I want to see those flashback mm -hmm. scenes. Well, let us know your thoughts down below in the episode. And yeah, we're Ooh. on hiatus now. So you can follow us on Twitter at City of the Fields and you can always talk to us and we're here for you. <laughs> Leave us a comment about your thoughts on the episode, what you thought of the ending, and what you're excited about for the second half of the season. And where do you think this whole storyline is going? Where do you think Sebastian's gonna fit into all of this? Do you think that Clary and Simon are gonna continue being a thing all of 2B? Or do you think it's gonna be half of it? Or when is Jace going to tell Clary that they're not related? So give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And we will see you soon. Soon. <laughs> with a new video. We will try and do a sh like a few Shadowhunter videos before. If you, give us, if you leave us some recommendations, we could try to during hiatus. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much Thank for watching. You. Bye.